Mario Sconti reporting. I know it's a little early for a shit sandwich, but I'm going to give it to you anyway, right? It's fucking 2000, 2019, we're already talking about the presidential, the big presidential run as if switching out the president is going to make all the difference in the world. To a lot of people, it will, right? That's what, that's the uh, the current view on the Democratic side. All you got to do is get rid of Trump and Pence, and everything will be fine. Everything will just fall in place, right? So let's look at... Uh, I'm going to read from uh, Rolling Stone magazine. Now, it's way too early and, and a lot can change, but Rolling Stone has ranked the top, I don't know, 25 or 30 uh, possible contenders for a 2020 run against the Republican, right? And who is the Republican? Is there any doubt? Is there any doubt at this point that Trump is the is going to be the candidate? Is that is it? Are we are we that? stupid and gaslighted to think that someone's going to, in the Republican Party, is going to rise up and beat a very successful president, Donald Trump, a, a populist, the popular populist guy, Trump. No way. So Trump's the, Trump's the candidate, right? Let's just, let's just go along those lines and say Trump is going to run against these shit sandwiches. And who are the shit sandwiches, right? So, so I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not, I didn't rank them, right? I'm just reading from the Rolling Stone, the very liberal, sometimes correct Rolling Stone magazine, right? This is their ranking, and uh, it seems like they got all the names right, right? So let's let's check it out. So number one, number one, Camilla Harris. <laughs> uh, I'll try not to laugh. Camilla Harris, the 55, 54-year-old black female California senator, former California attorney general, and establishment politics, advocating for Medicare for all, free college, and criminal justice reform. It's the first you're really hearing. She'll roll over on Medicare for all. Well, let's just continue, right? So here's the, here's the big one, right? She went to Howard University. Right? She's a racist, right? Am I wrong to say that? She, uh, blacks in America, wanted, you know, desegregating schools and, and desegregation. And here goes Camilla Harris running to an all-black university. Right? That's, that was her choice, right? To go to an all-black university. Right? I'm, is that racist? It's not racist, right? You want to be with your own people, right? Is that what she's saying? And then she wants to be president. All right. So 95.3%, this is the demographic of Howard University. 95.3% black African American. Right? Uh, 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 less than 1% American Indian. They, they got to do that. They got to give one Indian. 1.5% uh, Asian. 0.5% Latino. 0% multiracial. So anybody who identifies as multiracial. 1.9% um, white. And. Uh, and that's it. Right? Oh, zero uh, percent unknown. It's a, it's a racist school. Ninety-five percent black. Harris could give her her an advantage in a field chock full of white men. It's the, the Rolling Stone, because right? that's a qualification now. White, a black woman. Black women are the heart of the Democratic Party. That's it, right? Harris has extraordinary West Coast donor uh, ties. Reportedly, been hitting up. Uh, Wall Streeters uh, connections to Wall Street are well established. She's a, she's an establishment tool. Number two, number two, number two. Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas. Oh damn! Her early campaign tries in Iowa and New Hampshire have given have been eagerly eagerly attended, and she's debuted a plausible talking point for her DNA debacle. Quote: I am not a person of color. I am not a citizen of a tribe. She said. Tribal citizenship is very different than ancestry. Well, that's a good line, right? It's fucking swerving around it. Massachusetts Senator 69 brings ambitious progressive agenda on everything from foreign policy to pharmaceuticals to student debt and political corruption. She's a big, fat, fucking capitalist liar, right? She's, you're not going to get any, any change. No change, right? She's totally in the bank of the establishment. Totally in the pocket of the bank's. Sherrod Brown, number three. Fuck is Sherrod Brown? I don't know these fucking people. A proven Democratic winner in rid, uh, uh, Reading, 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 Ohio. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry, Ohio. Brown is skilled at debunking the lies Trump tells to Trump country and able to connect with working class voters. 
Washington Post, in a recent interview, Washington Post, Brown touted a proposal to boost the incomes of 47 million low-wage Americans with 1.4 trillion expansion of the earned income tax credit. Fucking 66 years old. Tax break, right? Tax break of, of money that people don't have. Fucking, no, that's no, that's no, that's no theory at all. Right? Give the tax break, cut, I'm not even going to go there. But number four, Beto O'Rourke. Beto O'Rourke. He stole progressive hearts and built a nationwide fundraising network attempting to oust uh, Ted Cruz. Be- Beto-, Beto raised $60 million for the fight. Uh, he- he's also a billion. He's the wife. He's the husband of a billionaire. The guy's a fucking nobody. He's going to fall by his wayside. Number five, Joe Biden, Joe, Joe Biden, fucking Joe Biden, former vice president, 76 years old, is connecting with a new generation of activists and voters. <laughs> really? During him, doing himself no favor, Biden dismissed struggles of millennials. This is Biden, quote, this is a good way to win elections, right? Quote, younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. No, no, I have no empathy for it. Give me a break. What an idiot. Biden is partially responsible for the woes of those kids, helping pass a 2005 bill under George Bush that makes it nearly impossible to dis- discharge student debts through bankruptcy. You, that's retarded, man. That's the worst. That's the worst. The worst, most uh, invasive loan that anyone in America could take out. Is, is the one that an 18-year-old kid takes trying to get through college. That's sick. He also supported mass incarceration in the 1994 crime bill. Good job, Joe. We're going to, yeah, you're going you're gonna to win. Number six, Bernie Sanders. Number six, Bernie Sanders. Now, Bernie Sanders got his foot in his mouth. He's calling Trump a racist. He's, he, he sided with, the, with the, the fake Russia story. He... He threw 20, 40 million people under the bus saying that the Russians stole the election when Hillary Clinton stole the election. We know who Bernie Sanders is. But let's see what the Rolling Stone magazine, the allegation of, they start off with just a, a nothing burger. When allegations of sexual harassment and unequal pay from, this, from his 2016 campaign surfaced, Sanders apologized and promised to do better moving forward. That, that's fucking stupid. Why do you apologize? Fucking Bernie, you idiot. See, they, and they're going to use it against him, right? Sanders, 77 year old, takes a hit in our rank. But the 2016 campaign still gives him advantage. He has the ability to raise big money. Bernie Sanders, that's, he's the only, he's one of two, in my, in this reporter's view, uh, is only one of two people that could surface. Sanders is one of them, and I'll tell you. When I get to it, the other one. Right? Number seven, Kirsten Gillibrand. No, it's not her. New York senator is a champion of progressive causes. <laughs> and perhaps the most vocal leader of the Me Too movement. Oh, I'll give you definitely in elected office. Calling out former Bill Clinton and pushing for Al Franken to resign. Right, great. She's got ton- she's got Wall Street donors up the ass. She's a, she's a nobody, zero personality. She won't win. Amy Kolbachar, number eight, Kolbachar, 58-year-old, showcased sparring with Kavanaugh in, in his confrontation confirmation hearing, and her legislative record is substantial. She's passed laws to ban lead in toys and to reduce backlog of rape kate kits. Wow, that's that's quite a quite a, quite it's very impressive. Number nine, Julian. Castro, Julian Castro, not Fidel Castro, Julian Castro, former housing and urban development secretary, shortlist for Hillary's VP, Texan, could be top Latino candidate in the field. He's 44. His personal story is that of Barack Obama. There's no no substance. Number 10, Cory Booker, Cory Booker, former super mayor of Newark. (laughs) It's like it's one of the shitholes of America. Super Mayor, 49, has one of the most liberal voting records in the Senate and has distinguished himself from centering federal, by centering federal marijuana discrimination. Ah, right, great. He's for, he's for free. It's already happening, Corey. Great job. He has problematic connections to Wall Street. Pff, damn right. 
He he is reportedly already talking to top financers in advance of his 2020 run. He was the first Democrat 2020 con- contender backed by a super PAC. He's a, he's a fucking nobody. He's a troll. He's a corporate tool. Right? Not for the people. Number 11, John Hinkenlooper, <laughs> California former governor, left office having created 400,000 jobs over his two-term career. Unemployment dropped below 3%. Shut, prove it. But he's also pro fracking and a longtime brewer. He, uh, he's a longtime brewer. Has initially, uh, uh unit, you know, this is about Colorado's trailblazing marijuana. All right, he doesn't like the, the marijuana shit in, in uh, Colorado. 66 year old is both. It's fucking who are these people? It's fucking, come on, man. Shit sandwich. Pete Butt. <laughs> But, but, but edge. His name is Pete, pronounced Pete Boot Edge Edge. Pete Boot Ed Edge, but it's it's spelled but. Pete Butt Edge Edge. I'll go with that one. Pete Butt Edge Edge. B U T T. The 36 year old mayor of South Bend, Indiana, seems like a long shot until you hear what he has to say. But Edge Edge was a road scholar. He, this fucking guy. He's openly gay. He 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 served in Afghanistan for seven months. Whoop the fucking do. He's openly gay and and broadcasted his live stream gay wedding on YouTube. All right, that's that makes him qualified. Number thirteen, Jay Inslee. Can a contender win by championing climate change? Inslee, the governor of Washington State, seems intent on finding out. All right, so his, there's a big... Uh, he's also for a public option in state health care. Public option. Medicare for all. Say it, Democrats. Medicare for all. That's the only way to go. Number 14, free Medicare for all. Universal free Medicare for all. No no universal coverage where everybody pays to the day they die. Right? We know the difference now. 14, Steve Bullock. The Montana governor with a Deadwood-worthy name. All right, so I don't know who that is. Eric Garcetti. Garcetti. <laughs> Eric Garcetti, mayor of L.A. L.A. mayor with Hispanic, Jewish, Italian. As if they got to rattle off what, what, what brand of, of human they are. Also wants to be the first candidate to help. Make the loop from City Hall. Guys, these are nobodies. 16, a formidable candidate. Michael Bloomberg's got $50 billion. Right? Can't underestimate a billionaire, right? New York billionaire and former Republican turned independent mayor. 76 years old. He's getting old. Certainly has the money and the face. He's a he's a formidable candidate. People, and if you like Trump, you'll 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 relate to Bloomberg if you haven't seen him. He started out as a, uh, he was the New York mayor, so so I know him, we know him in New York. He's a, he's a, he's a tough, he was a stiff in front of the cameras, but he really developed uh, over time in his uh, tenure as mayor. So what does he stand for? He stands for profit, making his own money. He's not, he's not a, it's not for the people, right? But can he dump, he's prepared to dump a billion dollars into the race. It's, no bullshit. A billion dollars has a lot of weight. Shit sandwich number 17, John Kerry. Oh, God. You remember this guy? After an ex- ex- <laughs> He was Secretary of State. Kerry is clearly among the most qualified Democrats. But uh, he got beat up in 2004 when he ran against Bush. You remember that? The now 75 year old told a crowd at Harvard in November that he's muling a run. It's a nobody, right? He's a, he's a talking guy like this, you know. He's a fucking boring, fucking chicken head looking guy, right? Forget about it. Eric Holder, a formidable inside player who who has close ties to Obama. I'll make a call on presidential run early in 2019. This is what he said. You remember this guy? He said, when they go low, we go high. No. Holder insisted, when they go low, we kick them. Uh, jerk off. 
Number 19 should sandwich Jeff Merkley, the progressive senator from Oregon 62, a video of Merkley showing up at a Texas detention facility. So he's all about immigration. Next. Terry McAuliffe, Clinton crony. You remember the guy? Clinton's gave him, uh, gave his wife 700 or he funneled $700,000 to the FBI guy. This, fucking, this guy's so crooked. So, so he's got, he's got Clinton, Clinton corruption all over him. Former VA governor, uh, Democratic money man. What else? 61 years old. He railed against what is called dishonest populism. What? Dishonest. You're the, this guy's one of the most dishonest players in the, in the, in the field, right? Free college, he also said. This is a good way to, good way to court millennials. He said, "Free college is not the answer. Put that on a bumper sticker." <laughs> These guys don't even want to win. Number twenty-one, Tim Ryan. Ryan represents post-industrial Youngstown, Ohio, here in Youngstown, in the in the House of Representatives, and wants the Democratic Party. I like that song, Bruce Springsteen. Here in Youngstown, oh, I fucking go play that later. Democratic Party to compete for the disaffected white. He ran against uh, Pelosi's 2016 Democratic leadership. Uh, nobody zero. These guys have no ability to get out. You got to be vocal, right? You got to like have a big stance. These are all shit sandwiches. Howard Schultz, number 22 shit sandwich. Howard Schultz, a former CEO for Starbucks Coffee, 65 years old, exited the coffee business. Uh, he could be a spoiler. That's where they're, meaning he could leave his mark because he refused, he's not going to run as a Democrat in 2020 as a spoiler. Uh, it's, right. If you run as an independent, they label you a spoiler. Number 23, Eric Swalwell, California congressman, 38 has already a, a member of House Leadership Intelligence Committee. He is almost certain to mount the presidential run. Number 24, John Danley. No one has poured more energy into 2020 race than former Maryland Congressman John Danley. Uh, so he's 55. He's up there and uh, he's already campaigning. All right. Number 25, number 25 is... Richard jo Ojeda lost his house race in West Virginia in deep red 3rd District, but uh, he's just aiming higher for 2020. <laughs> Populist, pro-worker, 48 years old. Ojeda said in a tweet video, um, what did he say? Everybody that's going to throw their hat into the ring to run for office is going to try their best to say they're one of you. Ojeda is uh, a tweet video, but are they really? They all say that shit. So you, you stand for no policies. Uh, he's, he's nothing. He's got nothing. Number 26. This is an interesting character. I, I read his shit. This, this is a crazy guy, right? Andrew Yang is a lawyer from the former Venture for America, <laughs> founder of Venture for America, which seeks to revitalize struggling urban centers by blah, blah, blah. 44 is one of the few officials de officially declared candidacy running on a platform of universal basic income. What? <laughs> For, this is interesting. To forestall the worst effects of the predicted unemployment crises from automation and I, AI. I don't know what that means. Quote, every U.S. citizen over the age of 18 would receive... A thousand dollars a month, regardless of income or employment status, free and clear, no jumping through hoops. All right, at least it's something different. Twenty-seven, and this is the other the other one in my view. This should she should be number one. Why? Because she has the heart and soul of the millennials. Right? Not a shit sandwich. Tulsi Gabbard, Tulsi Gabbard, an Iraq War veteran, Hawaiian Congresswoman. Gabbard is the first Hindu to serve in the House of Representatives. Millennials don't care about that. They don't care about that. They don't care about race or gender. They just want, they want policy, you dummies. That's why you got your black woman as the heart of the Democratic Party, Camilla Harris. Well, the heart of the, the millennials is right here in front of you. She's also, she happens to be, she happens to have a vagina as well. So you might be able to get behind her. 
37-year-old says she's running, but as a candidate for commander-in-chief, holds toxic <laughs> toxic views on Syria. No, she has the correct view on Syria, that, that the United States is inter- interventionists in that region. And Tulsi Gabbard paid a freelance uh, visit to the bloody dictator uh, Bashad al-Assad and dismissed his opposition across the board as a terrorist. Well, that's correct, because you're you're violating, you're in their country, right, long story short. Beyond that, right, she's correct on foreign policy. But she's also stand up, right? The millennials and all the pro- progressive media know her as the woman who, when Bernie Sanders was being cheated, she was uh, some position inside of the DNC, and she resigned because she saw the corruption. She walked away from the corruption, and that's a big, that's a big plus to the to the progressives that know her now. So she's a very formidable candidate. And when those people mobilize, don't don't kid yourself. The only reason Bernie Sanders anybody even knows his name is because of the grassroots progressives that once they once the shit gets going, they put they put their name out there. So. If if Sanders fails, here's your here's your runner up. And if if Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard join forces, you got a real you got a real team. All right, so that's about it. Wild card: Stacey Abrahams and Hillary fucking Clinton. <laughs> they had to throw a name in there just to upset everybody. So so that's that's the uh, that's the Rolling Stone. That's the 26 and a half, 25 and a half shit sandwiches. Two, the only two in my view. I mean, the Democrats will try to fort. They're gonna. It's already clear. And again, the Democratic primaries are rigged. None of these people, unless a tsunami, you know, without a tsunami of 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 interest, could overcome the cheating. Like even Sanders with the tsunami couldn't overcome it. They still cheated them right across the board. So uh, it looks like they'll they'll cheat their way for. Camilla Harris, she'll she may stand on the stage and get decimated by Trump. Right? If Sanders is the candidate, which they're not going to allow him to do it, could you know could give a good debate against Trump? But Trump is is is, is just is uh, is is already declared the winner in this uh, field. Again, Bernie Sanders, if he could get out and uh, in front and overcome his his. You know, calling everybody a racist and blaming Russia and and uh, open border shit. If he can overcome all that, which I don't think he will, and he can't, I don't think he's capable of. Uh, he's he's a formidable candidate, and uh, Tulsi Gabbard, who hasn't really taken a strong stance on any of that stuff yet, so she's a uh, kind of a blank slate. Marcus Conti reporting.